Hey, hey guys, it's Old Man G here, back again with another video for Red Devil Studio. And today we're basically gonna, I know it's a bit delayed, apologize. We're gonna do um, a reaction to Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference reaction against Chelsea. Uh, tomorrow um, I'll be posting my um, match preview um, of who I want to start versus who I think will start against Chelsea. Um, so stay tuned to that. But um, as the banner says, um, it's time to be positive. Um, it's time to be positive, and that's the gist of what we got from the um, the, the press conference. Um, it was clear from watching it um, that at times Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did feel a bit flustered, um, and either that's because he's um, he's annoyed at constantly being asked about transfers by the press, um, or it's obvious that he wanted to get a few one or two more players and he didn't get them, um, and that's and, that, and that's where he is. It's probably a combination of the both, to be honest. Um, but we move on, um, and he has said he's happy with the squad, um, he's positive, he trusts the players they believe in. And to be honest, you know, after my rant yesterday, um, just thinking about it, actually, I think if he's positive, the club's positive, we have to be positive as well. Um, Mourinho started the season negative, and I think that did affect us. We have to, you know, I think it's like hope for the best, expect the worst type of thing. It's like we go on the season with hopeful optimism and carrying the hope and ride that hope and hope that things work out. But we are going in with hope um, um, and we should back him. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I just think that being negative, ultimately it's going to affect the team. It's going to affect Oli um, and we need to be positive. And that's, a, and that's essentially the summary of, of, of the press conference here. So let me just get started, just sort of recapping um, the press conference away. Um, obviously, we're playing against Chelsea. Um, and a unique twist, it is the first ever competitive meeting between Manchester United and Chelsea, where both managers also previously played for respective clubs. You know, Lampard, ex-Chelsea player, um, Solskjaer, ex-United player, obviously. Um, I'm going to go in a bit more detail on from the pre preview video tomorrow, but say, stay tuned. Um, so let's get started. Um, so basically, Oli starts us all saying about how, you know, um, do you know what I think when the transfer window closes? A great feeling of relief. Now it's done. Now we know we're looking forward with, and I'm delighted with the, fr the free we sign. Um, I agree with him. You know, um, it's a relief, you know. Um, I think in part because of players that potentially want to leave, i.e. well, Pogba can still leave, to be fair. But I think it's more just the idea that um, you've got your squad and now we can focus on the upcoming season. There's no distractions, time to focus. Um, and I think that is a positive. Um, but I think we're all in agreement, guys, that that we're glad that even though we could have had a better trans window, we're glad that the trans window is over, to, to be honest. To be honest. Um He's asked about expecting more signings. Uh, did you expect more signings? He said, well, that's not the feeling inside the club and the feeling with the fans. I've met our excited with the ones we've had. There are always going to be fans out there want to sign players. That's part and parcel of being here. The players are here now and have been shown their trust and we believe in them. So I think that was one of those flustered moments in that, you know, I think it was, it was essentially like, you know, are, are you happy with the signings? You can see the fan frustration, etc. Clearly, um, they don't go on social media. <laughs> um, and good thing, to be honest, because he doesn't need that negativity going into the Chelsea game, uh, to be honest. Um, so, um, he says he's happy with the players. You know, I think that the, the difficulty, I think, with that statement is not so much the fact of um, that we shouldn't back the team, we shouldn't back the positivity. It's Oli's own words. So, Oli's words after the Ever Everton game. And these are the words that, if he'd said, okay, we need to move on, etc. Then that would have been different. But because his words in, you know, after the Everton game, where I want to be a success here, and there's certain players that are going to be playing, that I play today, that aren't going to be part of this squad. And then you look at the squad and go, well, it's pretty much the same, really. You know, like Lukaku and Herrera weren't playing against Everton. So, but they're gone. Fellaini was obviously gone in January. So, all the players that were playing and are still at Manchester United. So, that's I think that's the key, that's the thing. It's like it's not issue is the issue for me is not so much about this this whether he's didn't sign a player, sign a player or not. Is that you know you're you're going against there's there's a difference here. You're going against what you said a couple months ago where you were expecting. Presumably, you spoke to Woodward. It didn't work out. So that's what I think fans are getting on. Not that if you'd said, listen, I'm going to work with the teams we had in April, then fine. We'll work with what I have. But I think it's the fact that 
we are led to believe that we're going to have a substantial clear out because you weren't happy with the squad, only to basically have essentially what are going to be two. Because I don't expect Daniel James to start against Chelsea, you know. So, but I expect Wan Bissaka and Hamaguire to start, you know, expectedly. So, um, if we're talking about replacing Ashley Young, okay, fine, we've known that, and probably Phil Jones or Chris Moore is going to pair Lindelof. So. But that midfield is still the same. That front is still the same. So I don't know. Um, anyway, moving on. So um, it's, he obviously is asked about Lukaku, who, as you know, as you look at the previous video, um, uh, he's gone to Inter Milan. Um, there'll be a video about that. Well, there's a video about that. Um, he says, it was time now for him to go because I think we've got a good deal. Um, he's happy, so I think both parties ended that deal as it should be. Ron was injured for a while, so season didn't participate, so I just hope for him he'll get a good start into. Pretty diplomatic. Um, they were clearly honest with, with each other, and, and he basically goes on to say, um, is there any hard feelings or whatever? Um, there's not. Um, so, you know, was Lukaku being um, unprofessional? Because Gary Neville did say and blasted Lukaku for being unprofessional. He, he, he's asked about that. Um, and he says, I've always had a good relationship with Rom, open, honest, we've spoken to each other, open and frankly, and I have no issue between me and Rom, but we are now obviously, who's here, we're very happy with them. So, in simple terms, I just think that Lukaku was not in Rom, it was not in Oli's, Oli's plans. They've been open and frank about it. He's gone to Inter, deal done. That's it. Lukaku's gone. The unfortunate problem, as we discussed before, is that Lukaku's gone, but I don't see anyone to replace him, so, so we'll see. Um, and that's what he's asked about. He's like, of course, someone's good record and stats. He's one of the top number nines around when you want to play that, with that kind of striker. Target man. For me, I'm very confident that we'll get goals from Martial, Rashford, J uh, uh, Rashford, James will create. I'm sure Jess Linger will get more. We have a different attacking setup this month. Okay. So that is why we, I'm going to be at Old Trafford, um, uh, obviously, uh, on Sunday. But that is, that's what we're going to see. Because, yes, on Domino, we play target man like football. So, but, but the reality is that Martial and, and, and Rashford, in front of, I don't think have scored any more than 15 goals in a season. Certainly Rashford, I think, has only scored 12, I think, in a, in a Premier League Premier League campaign. They need to be scoring at least 20 plus. You know, if we're going to, if we're going to compete for top four, they need to be certainly, they need to be, or at the very least, in this country, because, you know, the big thing, the issue that I had, I think, with United when it was last season, um, especially in our dry seasons, is that, you know, we were relying on Lukaku quite a bit. But where were all, all the other goals coming from? Rashford wasn't that prolific. Martial was not that prolific. Pogba was inconsistent, but did score from the penalty spot on occasion. We weren't really getting a lot of goals from midfield. McTominay did start as the season end, ended over, started to get a, a few, and that and that was good. And hopefully McTominay says... I mean, I, I, I really, as a side note, and we'll talk about this in another video, you know... In my ideal world, Fred, McTominay and Pogba start that midfield. That's where I, I, I go from. I think McTominay, you know, should start. I don't want to... I, would, I really wouldn't don't want to see Matic. If Matic is going to be there, Ma, 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 put Matic and then McTominay and Pogba. Possibly all team with Fred. Possibly. I don't know. But, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, he said we'll have a different attacking setup this month. We'll see. We'll see. Um... Asked about whether the attack better than last season, obviously with Lukaku being gone. Towards the end of last season, we didn't score a lot of goals and you do think players will have a, an impact. And Mason Green and Pathway would have been a lot more different if we had had another forward there. And I believe Mason's going to be playing and involved a lot. And when he is, he's going to score goals. So Mason Greenwood clearly is going to be in the first team. The season is going to be starting. Personally, I would have him on the bench. I mean, you've got to think about it. It's like, who... The reality is we don't have an impact forward on our bench. Alexis Sanchez, I just think, has a lot to prove again this season. But I think he's past it and so is not our impact. Alexis Sanchez coming on, he's, he's done every time. He's not, he's not been our impact at all. So really, outside of Alexis Sanchez, um, Mason Green was the only player, you think, who can come on the bench and maybe make an impact in terms of a f f forward play. Um... Understand, fan, he's asked about the fans' negative mood going in, understandably. Uh, and he said, of course, you want to put that right. And the only way we can put any doubts is by playing good football. Exactly. Showing the team we want to be, the style we want to play, and our fans, when they see that intention, 
have always been supporting the team. But within the team, the club, we're feeling very confident and don't feel that negativity you're talking about. So, clearly, they're not taking the negativity. And the thing is, that's good. Because they shouldn't have to carry, they shouldn't carry negativity in the start of the season. We want to start positively. That is what we want to see at Manchester United. No doubt. Wait, what? Sorry, I don't know if my thing is frozen. Anyway, I'm, I'll carry on. I'll carry on. Sorry. Um, anyway, apologies about that, guys. T minor, minor technical issues. Um, so, yes, we should continue to carry that that positivity um, into it. And I'm glad Oli's not feeling the negativity. That's good. Um, and I just think that um, we'll, we'll see. We will see. We will see. Um, but it's better than Mourinho last season that carried that negativity, frankly, um, into um, into into long season, and that 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 wasn't good. You know that 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 wasn't good at all. Um, moving on, um, net might spend money there to make changes needed. Um, I said earlier in the preseason last season as well. It's not about quick fix. It's a long rebuild. This is Ollie about the right players, right people in. It's not about suddenly changing it all when you haven't got the right ones and he and correct answers from the players you wanted to have. If it's Doubt most of the time. There's no doubt, and you'd rather trust the ones we have. There's money available, and the right players available. Um, this is where I think it got a bit flustered and a bit fuddled, and where I disagree because you. It's a, so because you're saying you're saying oh that the money is available, but we need the right players. And it's like okay, you spend eighty million on Harry Maguire. Okay, Harry Maguire was not available. We had to prize him away from Leicester. Unless there's something going on with midfield, the reality is that we needed another midfield player, Oli. Um, you know, I'm not saying that out of, you know, as a, you know, I demand that we get what we want. I'm saying that from even a, just a logistical, you know, unless, you know, the only way I see this is that Oli really is preparing to really use the youth this season. And if that is the case, then, and he's going to take that risk, fair enough. I think there should be experience in that squad. But if that's the case, if it's like, you know what? I'm going to use the you, you're going to step up into the gaps, then fair enough. Get that. You know, get Garner into that midfield. Play with Tom all the time. Fred, etc. Fine. Got no problem with that whatsoever. The problem I will have is if you just continue to play Matic um, all the time. Continue playing Matic all the time. You're not actually bringing in those, those young players. And those players, I don't think can play... A 30. Matic cannot play 30 games a season, let alone play Europa League games. Bearing in mind that we're going to be playing on a Thursday and then on a Sunday and the jet lag and the flying tiredness, you know. So I accept that viewpoint, but it, it's got to be backed up with either injection of the youth because the fans will obviously give the youth, youth patience. We, 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 we want to see how they're going to play. Um, or um, we, we sign the players. But if you're just going to rely on the old guard, then that's when, you know, question marks will be asked. Because we'll go, it's the same players, your Ashley Youngs, your Matichits, that have, have led, to, have caused mistakes. And if you're going to continue to persist with them, so your Matich, your Matich, your Phil Jones, you're going to persist with them, despite the fact that they're glaringly making mistakes, then there's going to be problems. Um, on facing Lampard... He just basically said he's glad he's not playing because he scores goals, won't he? And I, and I agree. I agree. Um, brief on Alexis Sanchez. He's obviously been out. He's been trained behind closed doors. Um, I think he'll see this as an opportunity as well to make his mark. The guy's been here for about a season and a half now. Um, you know, to be honest, this is his last chance, really. You know, um, this is, will be going into his, you know, arguably the third season, you know, okay, second and a half season, whatever. And if he doesn't make an impact, he's got to go. I would argue he's, he's got to go in January, you know, um, because I just, I'm not saying it shouldn't take two, two and a half full seasons for a player to get going, especially if that player is on very, very high wages. So the idea of making the markets like, yeah, and here as we're talking about finance, it's that how can Alexis Sanchez be on 350 to 400k, whatever it is a week, and it's time for him to make an impact. He's not ready, etc. That's what I don't get. 
that's that's just what what doesn't make sense to me. Um, it, it it just it just really doesn't. It really doesn't. Um. So, obviously, built in the captains. Few in the group beneath Ashley and some leaders. You might get crew on Sunday. So that's probably Ashley Young. Well, we don't know who's going to be captain, but we'll see. Um, I imagine if I could suspect who's going to be captain, because Ashley Young's probably not going to play. It's going to be Wan Bissaka. I imagine um, it might be Pogba to sign Sim. Or De Gea, most likely De Gea, when they announce his new contract. Um, Matic, possibly. Um, but I would say it's probably going to be between Pogba and De Gea. You know, or, or Matter if he starts Matter. Um, just a bit about players leaving. I mean, he does give a brief, uh, you know, like, well, we'll see what, what happens. Uh, won't go into that. Um, and then... Um, Thoughts on Villa. I'm for it when it makes the factual decisions correct. So if you're offside two yards, two centimetres, you are off. That is a big thing. As long as it happens quickly, it's going to be a benefit and make the league more fair. And I agree with him there. I think VAR is... is I've, I've seen my VAR video, guys. I think VAR is, is, is long overdue. And at the end of the day, for me, it's about getting the, the factual decisions correct. That's it. You know, there are still things that are subjective. And we just have to accept that. But I think that when we talk about factual decisions, VR's got factual decisions correct according to the letter of the law. And that is the key here. A lot of the issues with VAR that a lot of people were having, they were not, it wasn't so much with VAR, it was an issue with the law. So the Women's World Cup, Champions League, etc. of handball, the issue was with the law, not with the implementation of the law. So I think the only issue people are going to have is that with VR is with oh what oh why is that law why is that it's going to highlight because frankly most people that watch football are ignorant of Premier of Premier League laws they don't watch football and go right I'm going to read up the laws on the game before I watch a game they're not so they're going to be ignorant about it so when you then see these decisions like oh it's unfair it's unjust and then the law's like well actually it's been in the law since the beginning of the season it's it's just being implemented because we can via the technology. That's when I think people start to ask questions. But then just, you know, don't be ignorant. That's, all, that's as simple as that. Um, so, why United did not sign everyone with Kafka replacement? Um, as, a, as a brief, it says Manchester United didn't recruit Verizon on Kafka in order to prioritise development Mason Greenwood, which I think is fair enough. Um, I think, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's it really. Um... I mean, at the end of the day, in summary and conclusion, um, Solskjaer is happy with the transfer window. He's happy with the transfer window. That's it. We should back him. We should, we should be positive. That's essentially that's essentially the summary of the of the um, of the conclusion. Um, that's it, really. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, it's been a bit of a long video. I better stop because this video is almost 18, 18 minutes now. Um, so um, please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Um, Tune in tonight for Red Devil Studio Live at, at 8 o'clock. We're going to get a bunch of Premier League fans. We're going to go to town um, on, on transfers, expectations, what have you. Red Devil Studio Live, tune in. It's going to be great. All the best, guys, and cheers.